So what about the story just excited you the most that made you say, I have to work on this? Well, it, it was, it, you know, I, I found it, I ran into a friend of mine named Brian Hayes Curry, who's an actor first, but he said he was writing a screenplay based on a true story about this black concert pianist in 1962 who record company was sending him on a tour of the South and he was afraid to go, so he hired a bouncer from the Copacabana in New York City, an Italian guy with a sixth grade education who was racist himself, but he was good with his fists and he hired him to drive him. And somehow, after this trip, these guys became lifelong friends. And I was like, you're kidding me. This is, that's a home run. What an amazing story. And he wasn't pitching me. He was just telling me. I just bumped into him. <laughs> and I called him about a month later and said, can I get involved? This is, I love this story. And so we, I started writing with him. And you have assembled the most amazing cast that have created such wonderful characters on screen. How was it directing Mahershala and Vigo and Linda? I would just come in. At, I, I stayed at home all day, and I'd just come back at the end of the day and look at the dailies and see what they did. <laughs> no, it felt like that. It was, it, was a, um, uh, it was a lot of tweaks. Little, you know, it wasn't like, okay, come on, let's break this down. This scene's not working. It was none of that, and I've had that. You know, like, let's rethink this, you know. These guys, we started with a really good script, but these guys, you know, when you have a good script, you hope that the actors can raise to the level that you brought the script. That's what you're aiming for, but these guys made it above the script, and I'll tell you how. On paper, it was funny, but not as funny as it is as a movie. And it's funny as a movie, not because of the jokes, but because of their performances, the subtleties, the nuances. It's when they're sitting at the table and he says, hey, I saw the, I saw the, the album about the uh, orphans. And he goes, orphans? He goes, yeah, the thing about the orphans sitting around the campfire. And he goes, uh, Orpheus. He goes, yeah. And it's their reaction, their tiny little things that they're doing that kill the, in this movie. And so it was basically me saying like, you know, it was easy. It was an easy movie to direct. Well, it's an incredible movie. I have to tell you, it's Thank so you. good. Um, I have to ask you, because you worked with the, the son of Tony Lip. Was there a little bit more pressure? Because not only are you portraying real people, but you're portraying his dad. Um, it wasn't pressure while we were shooting. It was, a, it was great to have Nick on the set, Nick Vallelonga, because he, uh, he got the thing and he was a great sounding board. He was by my side the whole time and I would always look over at him and occasionally, you know, things weren't right. He said, no, he wouldn't do that, you know. And we fixed those things. But in the writing, that's where we had, when we wrote it with Nick and with Brian Curry, there'd be things where, you know, he was trying, he loves his father. And he was sometimes, not often, but every now and then he was kind of sugarcoating something. I said, no, that's, let's be real. Let's be, this is what he was. Let's not pretend he wasn't. And because, you know, he's a flawed person, as everybody is, but he grows in this thing, but he starts off as a racist. And you've got to face that fact, or else you're not making a real movie. And that was the kind of thing. But, but once we got over those hurdles, uh, it was phenomenal having him with us. Uh, speaking of racism, I feel as if now there's a lot of racism and discrimination and just making the headlines and this feels as if this is the right movie for now can you speak to that yeah it it, it definitely resonates i i always say like i wish that we were looking at this movie and saying can you believe it used to be like that 56 years ago that there was racism in this country that would be a nice world if we we're there now but we're not we're just saying oh so racism was a different kind of racism there than now, but we still have racism in, in, in all it's, it's, you know, all walks of life. There's racism. And, uh, and, and, and I hope this movie, this movie is not a preachy movie. This isn't about race. This is about love. And it's about how people from both sides of the aisle can come together and find a common ground because ultimately you realize, as you do when you cut through the walls, we're all the same. And that's the message here.